the style. I wasn't a stylist in those days. I knew enough about good writing to know that. Last night at supper, you and I spoke about Theodore Dreiser. We agreed more or less, didn't we, that style was not his forte, and yet he had something better than style. Dreiser was one of those people I read at the time, and I would rally my literary troops whether, whenever they were showing signs of bad morale by saying to myself, well, Dreiser doesn't have much of a style. One of my basic notions for a long, long time is that there's this mysterious mountain out there called reality. We novelists are always trying to climb it. We are mountaineers, and the question is, which face do you attack? Different faces call for different approaches, and some demand a naughty and convoluted interior style. Others demand great simplicity. The point is that style is an attack on the nature of reality. So I wrote the Gilmore book simply. Maybe it led me to think I could take a crack at Hemingway, but the fact of the matter is, when it comes to writing simply, I am not Hemingway's equal. My great admiration for Hemingway is not necessarily for the man, the character. I think if we had met, it would have been a small disaster for me. But he showed us, as no one else ever has, what the potential strength of the English sentence could be. Let's linger on Hemingway for a second. Is it possible he showed a generation how to get emotion into a sentence without mentioning emotion? Huh. Yes, and he did it more than anyone had ever <laughs> had that work before. I couldn't see it. It was yes or no. It was a 50-50 shot. Uh, but here's a trap. But he's a trap. If you're not careful, and you end, up, if you're not careful, you end up writing like him. It's very dangerous to write like Hemingway. But on the other hand, it's almost like a rite of passage. I almost wouldn't trust a young novelist. I wouldn't speak for the women here, but for a male novelist who doesn't imitate Hemingway in his youth. 